guys welcome back to the channel today we are going to be talking about the new 2020 f250 350s 450s and we're just going to get straight into it these are the changes that were made for 2020 um a lot of people think that the engine design engine change was very minor they didn't do much but i'm here to tell you they did a ton to this engine they made many changes many of which are big and I think they have a big reason for it, and I'm pretty sure you guys are going to want to know why. So let's jump into that. I'm going to go ahead and start from the top of the engine. We're going to work our way all the way down to the bottom of the engine with these changes. And I'm going to let you guys know at the end, obviously everything that's been changed and every part to an engine basically. And you can tell me what you think. But like I said, we'll get into, uh, I think, the reason that they made these changes. So starting at the top. The turbo. The turbo obviously sits on the top of the engine, you know, kind of like a supercharger nowadays. They stick them right there on the top, and the reason is the reverse flow design of these cylinder heads in comparison to an engine like this. The exhaust actually comes out the top straight into the turbo and then helps it spool, keeps the heat there. Uh, there's lots of benefits to it, good, good reasons. They went ahead and changed the turbo itself. So the whole entire turbo changed along with changing the turbo. They went ahead and changed how it's controlled, the variable vane and the wastegate so now they're both electronically controlled so it's going to allow for better manipulation better tweaking of the turbo this is going to produce a quicker spooling and make more horsepower and more torque at a lower rpm this is obviously going to help with fuel mileage and towing it's kind of a win-win and uh, i think those are big things the next thing is going to be the intake manifold so right after the turbo you guys know is the intake manifold so we're going to come out of the turbo all the way down into an intercooler, out of an intercooler, into the intake manifold. Now the factory manifold was plastic on the 2017 to 19s. The 2020 is now a aluminum two-piece. They also went ahead and put thermal plates between the cylinder heads and the intake manifold. Obviously for known reasons, heat transfer. Obviously if we get colder air in there, we're going to make more power. Next is the fuel system. It has a new high-pressure 36,000 PSI fuel system. We already know fuel systems are a little bit touchy on these trucks. They seem to have a little bit of water get in there and just destroy these pumps. So I don't know if it's still utilizing a CP4 fuel pump. I pray that it's not considering it's 36,000 PSI now. Now they went from having three pilot injections to eight which is a big reason why they needed this higher fuel pressure. You need higher fuel pressure to get these multiple quick injections off. That's going to help with noise. It's not really fuel economy. It's going to, you know, just really noise and, and maybe a little bit with fuel economy and getting a complete burn for the EPA more than anything. A lot of tuners know this leaves headroom on the table for tuning them. So it's a benefit. So we know that because Ford's leaving this uh, with eight pilot injections, we're going to have some headroom as far as tuning's concerned. After the fuel system, we go down to the cylinder head. Guys, the cylinder heads are completely different. It's a brand new cylinder head. On top of the cylinder head changing, really, I, there's not a lot to speak about. Obviously, if you guys know, in my opinion, cylinder heads are 80% of an engine. If you put a good cylinder head on a car versus a crappy cylinder head, you're going to see tremendous differences and it's pretty amazing. There's a big reason why they change the cylinder heads and that's because of, if you're looking, everything about this is changing. You know, the whole top end of the engine is changed, so they're going to make the cylinder head change. Which is moving on to my next point is the cam. I'm 90% sure they didn't mention anything about the cam, but you got to change the cam to match everything else. Everything's got to work together. It's got to be copacetic and working in an orchestra type fashion. The cam is going to play a big part in getting that power delivery in and make sure it's a good, smooth, continuous power delivery. So the, that cam really, really plays a big role in that. After the cam, the next big thing, guys, is the pistons and the rods. They're now using a high strength steel piston, which allows them to shrink the skirt and they're using a longer, stronger rod. There's benefits to this. One of the major benefits is geometry of the engine. We get to change a little bit, which means having a smaller skirt, less likely to have skirt rub down low on these long stroked diesels. So it's gonna be a big benefit. And on top of that, this piston is stronger, which is gonna allow it to make more power. That's what Ford's going for is longevity and good, strong, durable engines. After that, it's the bearings. You know, they change, these are new, better coated bearing, stronger, uh, you know, and is gonna help with longevity. Cause again, these engines are dirty. They deal with soot. Soot is a big, big role player in actually wiping out bearings, believe it or not. So a lot of people see their oil and they're dark and everybody's like, ah, don't worry about it. It's a diesel, it's a diesel, it's a diesel. It's carbon soot and that carbon is tough. If you don't think carbon is tough, go take a diamond and hit it with a hammer and see who wins that war that diamond will break your hammer. So uh, people think you could 
smack a diamond with a hammer and it'll break your, uh, your, your diamond. No, it'll, it'll break your concrete and your hammer. And it's 100% carbon, pure. So it's tough stuff. So anyways, that's what'll wipe your bearings out and you know, knock it out. So there's a big reason as to why they did that. Now, if we kind of go back and look at this in a broad spectrum of everything they've changed, guys, they literally have changed almost the entire engine. Every inch of this engine has changed except for the engine block. Now, why is that? Well, there's some assumptions out there, you know, it's just a refresh, it's just this, it's just that. But I think what Ford is going to do is put out a pretty impressive number with his engine. I think it's going to be 500 horsepower and 1,050 foot-pounds of torque. Now, you ask me, why do I think it's 1,050? Well, it may not be quite 1,050. It may be 1,020, 1,030 foot-pounds. But I'm telling you this right now, they are giving themselves headroom with this engine, which is an awesome thing for guys like me that like to modify them because when we turn them up, we have headroom. We got ways to go. And the reason I say that is I think Ford wants to keep the 6.7 in production as long as they can. The longer they keep it, the more cost effective it is for them. And also, we're at a point now where do we really need all this horsepower and torque? Is this really a battle we're trying to do? How much horsepower and torque do we need? You can only tow so much with a three quarter ton and one ton truck legally without a CDL. So I think we're hitting that point where it's going to be useless power. They're not even going to be able to do anything with it. It's kind of a beat in your chest. Who's got the biggest, baddest? Who's got the you know strongest truck out there? So it's pretty cool, but what they're really doing is just giving themselves headroom for the next generation. So this is going to revamp the truck, and I really believe they're going to keep this engine for another three to four years. So the 6.7 is going nowhere anytime soon, but we also had a change with the 10-speed transmission brought into the mix. So we're going from a 6-speed to a 10-speed. Again, there's no manual offered autos only but we went from a six speed auto to a 10 speed auto. Now, a benefit of going to a 10 speed is obviously with a gear selection like that, you should really be able to get in your max torque or perfect torque anywhere at any speed pretty much. You're gonna have this beautiful torque range no matter what speed you're going, you're gonna be able to tow wherever you're going, uphill, downhill, side hill, it doesn't matter, you're gonna be in the right, right torque range. So that's a big benefit, but I also think it's because they went to this, this whole engine change with a quicker spooling turbo. They're trying to get this turbo to light quicker, so they wanna be able to make torque quicker and get the truck off the line quicker. I think this truck is actually gonna be really fast. Now, GM did the same thing where they put a 10 speed in theirs, and they're now saying that you can put down all the torque that engine makes in first gear with that 10 speed, which was not achievable prior. But one thing GM did to go together with that 10 speed is they changed the gearing. They gave you a long gear because they're like, hey, we got all these gears in the transmission. We might as well take advantage of them by putting a longer gear in the vehicle. They put a 331, which is a pretty long or pretty tall gear for a truck that is supposed to be towing. Personally, I love that idea. I'm all about being on the highway at the lowest gear possible and just letting it jet set. And especially with all this whole new added package of an engine that they've set together for the 6.7 that's going to allow you to make that good torque down low to lower rpm so we give ourselves a little bit of a longer gear with more gears to select from we're going to be able to really zip down the highway at a higher speed so i think to guys that are towing they're kind of almost curving it to say hey look you can tow at 80 miles an hour not that they put that out there but i'm guaranteeing you these trucks are going to probably tow really well at 80 miles an hour unfortunately that's not very safe i don't recommend it but I mean, they're making it possible. I feel like the future is faster, faster, faster. That's what everybody wants. So I believe it's heading that way. But uh, that's pretty much it, guys. I just wanted to cover that. They also introduced the 7.3. I don't know if you guys saw that. It's a gas engine. Um, it's a pretty good looking engine. I think it's gonna be around 450 horsepower and 470 foot pounds of torque. Nothing too crazy. It's like 440 cubic inches to 450 cubic inches. So I'm kind of a fan of these heavier duty gas engines. I think they're pretty cool. In the gas world, a displacement definitely helps with uh, fuel economy. So in the diesel world, it usually pays off to stick a little more boost down it compared to, uh, you know, make it a bigger displacement. So I'm going to get out of here. But I appreciate you guys for watching. If you're new to the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. Also, if you like this video and it was informative, you learned something, 
give it a big fat thumbs up. Uh, I'll appreciate it, and it'll help me also get the recommended. So see you guys next time, but keep wrenching on your own cars. Keep kicking butt, you guys. And the next video, I think, is going to be on the Cobra again because we're going to have some fun with it. We just, we just fixed it. Unfortunately, it's got that ugly stock intake or uh, expansion take, but I think we need to go drive it and have some fun with it. But uh, it's time for you guys to get the heck out of here.